Hi ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the West Ham Massive. Thanks for joining me and please don't forget, drop a like on the stream. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're new around here and hit the bell icon for alerts of new content and get your comments in in the section below. Um, it's just finished here at the London Stadium. West Ham United nil, Chelsea 3. And to be perfectly honest with you, what I witnessed today, that could have been a 6-0 easily. I turned around and said in the match preview that we've started this season, every game's been the same in that we've started the game poorly. The first half has been something that's concerned me in each of the games in the Premier League and in the Carabao Cup against Bournemouth, where in the first half we've not looked at the races. And fair enough, the manager made changes or the head coach, whatever you want to call him, he's made changes in the second half that have made things look a little bit better but my concern was we was coming across a Chelsea team that on their day are a top team they can be a basket case but on their day they can be a top team and they can be a match for any team in the land if they get it right that was my concern and I said that if we don't approach this game correctly this game could be over by half time well I was almost right at half time it was 2-0 it was two goals from Nicholas Jackson and this is a player that a lot of people last season said that he wasn't all that. And to be honest, I was one of them. A lot of people made the observation that he actually scored more goals for Chelsea in his first season as a Chelsea player than a certain Didier Drogba. Well, today, what I saw in the first half, it was kind of reminiscent of Drogba. Maybe not prime Drogba, but a decent level Drogba. He got a brace in the first half, made it 2-0. And... I gotta be honest with you, I, I, I what I witnessed in the first half really concerned me. There was a lot of players out there that seemed like they didn't know each other. There wasn't a cohesive plan. And what, 35 minutes in, and I know that we obviously moaned about David Moyes and saying that he didn't make an awful lot of substitutions. He'd sit on his hands. And the one thing I will say about this guy is that he does he doesn't muck about. He does get the substitutions done. If he can see something's going wrong, he will make a substitution. 35 minutes, I think it was, he brought on Thomas Socek for Guido Rodriguez. I don't think he had a great first half, I've got to be honest with you. Um, I didn't, It didn't seem to be an injury, so it must have been tactical. But what I noticed is as he came off, there was no interaction between him and Julian Lopetegui on the on the touchline. They just they were like ships of the past in the night. There was no sort of like handshake. There was no pat on the back. There was no embrace. There was nothing. They just sort of like they just didn't even sort of make eye contact from what I saw. So I'm not quite sure what's going on there behind the scenes, if anything. Um, then we get sort of like into the into the second half, and the game's done within a minute or two. They get a third goal with Cole Palmer, and that was the game wrapped up. You knew right there, three 0 down. We are not coming back from that. It was unlikely we were going to come back from 2-0 down at half-time if we're being completely truthful about it. Once the third goal went in, that's it. Game over. Game, set, match. Move on. He made more substitutions, to be honest. They were they were sort of like done for the sake of it. They weren't really going to ultimately change the outcome of the match. But the one substitution that was, was quite telling was the substitution of Crescencio Somerville. Now, I didn't actually think he had that bad a game, considering this is his home Premier League debut. I actually think he did okay. But a lot of the crowd here were, took that substitution quite negatively. There was very audible, very, very audible in the stadium booing of that decision. Um, Mikhail Antonio was one of the players that came on. He didn't really do nothing. Pakitar came off again. Completely the right substitution. Um, in fact, there's, there's an argument to be said it probably should have been made earlier. He was awful today. He was giving the ball away. And I know people say that he's our creative influence, but it just isn't happening this season. And yeah, it might be things that are behind the scenes that are going on. It might be to do with this betting stuff and all the rest of it. But the fact of the matter is, is that our playmaker, the guy that's supposed to be making the team tick, isn't making the team tick he can't he's, he's just not operating at the level he, we need him to i think this is the time guys i really do i think that we he needs to be taken out of the starting 11 i know he was taken out of the starting 11 for the fulham game he obviously came on at half time again in that team and obviously the managers decided to start him here today bad decision in my opinion on the basis of that performance that just wasn't good enough 
he's not alone. There's a lot of players there that I think they need to take a really long, hard look at themselves in the mirror. But I am beginning to question the manager. You know, and, and yeah, okay, yes, 10 players coming in, all the rest of it, change of emphasis. There are certain things that I am looking at and are an improvement on the previous regime, as I say. I mentioned about substitutions getting done early when he realizes there's a problem. But does that lead into he's picking the wrong team to begin with? And that's a common trend. You know, we're constantly starting these games on the back foot and he's having to repair the damage. Just pick your best team. Tadebo, again, what's going on there, guys? Jean-Claire Tadebo, we've chased him. We've, we've sort of like, we've made all sorts of reparations to get him through the door. We get him in. He's barely kicked a ball. He stayed on the substitute bench. Mavropanos had an absolute shocker last week against Fulham. Absolute shocker. And I think everybody was saying, this is now the time. Tadebo's got to come in. He's on the bench again. And didn't come on. Didn't get a kick. Another one. Luis Guillerme, right? We've spent 20 million quid on this geezer, this kid from Brazil, and he may come good. It might be a good investment in time, but right here, right now, he didn't even make the bench. And he's not playing for the under-21s. It's not like um, Luis Al. We bought him from Brazil. He's gone into the 21s. It hasn't worked out. Fine, not a problem. But we didn't play. T- we didn't pay 20 million quid for, for Luis Al. We paid 20 million quid, uh, reputedly, for Luis Guillerme. And he's not on the bench today. He's not playing for the 21s. What the hell is going on? We've made some quite strange signings, in my opinion. Like I say, they're, they're two cases in point. Tadebo just doesn't seem to be getting a look in. Is that actually a signing that Julian Lopetegui has, has actually signed off? It would appear not. I would suggest it, do, it, it doesn't look like it. Luis Guillerme, again, what's going on there? Is that a Tim Stighton signing? It looks like it probably is because the, man, the, the head coach is not involving him. Um, but as far as the result here today is concerned, Chelsea absolutely deserved it. We, we got exactly what we deserved. We got rinsed. We got properly rinsed. We got done. We got shut out by the opposition. We just didn't offer enough. Um, as far as some positives are concerned, if I can try and find any, not that he was involved for very long. I, I thought Andy Irving looked bright. I thought he he did what he could. Um, you know, I'm not going to say that, that he was like prime Maradona or anything like that, but I think he came on. He certainly looked better than Pakitar. And to be honest with you, I wouldn't actually be averse to maybe having him in for Pakitar. That might be quite controversial. Um, maybe sort of like there's, there's scope to put Carlos Soler in. Um, Thomas Suchek's an option, I guess. But personally, I, I think that that would be a retrograde step. But this was really concerning, guys. And now this is three home games in the Premier League. Now, I think I'm right in saying we've never started a league season and lost all three home games, the first three home games. I'm pretty sure I'm right in saying that. Um, certainly, at least in the Premier League era, possibly ever in top flight football. When was the last time we had three home games at the start of the season and lost all three. I, I struggle to think. I'm pretty sure I'm right in saying that's something, certainly in the Premier League era, that's never happened. And I am starting to get some alarm bells, guys. This manager, this head coach, excuse me, I can see some very strange decisions that are going on, and I'm sure you can see them going in front of your eyes just the same as I can. What the hell is going on? This needs to change. We've got Brentford away next in the league. Um, I think, we've, from memory, I think it's Liverpool in the Carabao Cup, but I'm kind of I've kind of already put that to one side and I'm not expecting too much there. Brentford away now becomes a critical game because if we go to that game and it's not usually not usually a, a team that we do that well against. And even in the games we have won, we've kind of laboured to get the three points. Um, this is now a, game, a critical intersect of the season and it's re- come really, really early. If we go to Brentford and we don't pick something up, even a point and a sort of like a, a good performance, this now starts to become quite a concerning start to the season. We've brought 10 players in. We've brought a new coach in. We're trying to change things. It isn't working. It simply isn't working. Um, and there will be people in the mainstream media, there will be some West Ham fans that might be watching this, that will be saying, aha, you shouldn't have got rid of David Moyes. We were right. You were wrong. Maybe they've got something. Maybe maybe, maybe they've got a point. I don't know. I, I hope not. But for goodness sake, it's it's looking, it's really concerning now, guys. Now, I'm not for one minute saying we're in for a relegation battle. I'm not saying that yet. 
but this is a really concerning start. So that's me. This this has been an absolute poor, poor performance, a poor, poor start to the season. Um, there have been some papering over the cracks. The second half against Crystal Palace, we managed to get three points there. But let's be honest, in the first half, we weren't very good. We got a point away at Fulham. But again, being honest about it, if they had had their shooting boots on, we'd have been out. They'd have been out of sight by half time. They didn't. We managed to get quite lucky there. Um, the game against Bournemouth, again, level of fortune about that. This is this is not a good start to the season, guys. Give me your thoughts in the section below. Are you starting to get squeaky bum time? Or do you think we need to give this manager another, another bit more time? And, and if you do, what is that time? Is it another game? Is it two games? Five games? Ten games? What's, your, what's the point at which you're going to start to formulate an opinion on whether this guy is the man to take this club forward or not, as the case may be? I'm starting to get worried, guys. Anyway, I'm going to disappear now. Get your comments in the section below. Don't forget, drop a like on the stream. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're new around here. Hit the bell icon. We'll see you again soon. Come on, you irons.